Hey, this is Christina Dam, and this is Liberate the Podcast, where we educate, motivate, inspire, and liberate your consciousness. Hi, welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. I am super excited because I've just spent the last hour or so getting to meet the most extraordinary individual. And when I say one of the most extraordinary individuals, I mean it. And not only is it my opinion, it's, it's happening globally. Forbes called her the next Steve Jobs. She's literally changing financial blueprint across the globe and helping people live a more financially free life. She's in the tech business. She's an author. She j- came up with the book, The History of the Black Dollar. And I mean, when I just say boom, 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 like she's changing everything. And I'm excited. You're going to get to meet her, but we're also going to do a deep dive into her story and so much more so that you can see that this amazing person, just like all all of us, we go through our struggles in life and overcome. And that I hope that you're inspired by her to feel that spark inside of you that you can do things too. So welcome Angel Rich. And I got to say, you have the perfect name for everything you're doing. (laughs) Thank you so much. I'm definitely honored to be here. And I'm actually very excited to have this conversation with you. Hi, I'm excited. Uh, So I want to, you know, backtrack a little bit. uh, And, you know, talk to share with everybody you know a little bit about your story and then I'm going to kind of just segue and ask you some questions we're going to see where this goes because that's kind of how I flow it's like where are we going and where's the conversation lead us sounds good so um, I grew up in DC fourth generation didn't really necessarily plan to go to college Um, nobody in my family went to college nobody in my neighborhood went to college I never visited a college and then my high school senior teacher uh, made me apply to college as an assignment uh, for school. I applied to Hampton University. It was the only school I applied to. When I got to Hampton, uh, it was the first time that I had ever even stepped foot on a college campus. From there, I really feel like that's where I began my journey into adulthood. I was really able to kind of find myself there, figure out what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. My senior year there, I then won Goldman Sachs Portfolio Challenge in college. I came up with an algorithm for the stock market. We reverse engineered uh, uh, the stock market as well as two pages of stocks that Goldman Sachs had given us to review. This was December 2008, so the stock market had just crashed, and we won first place. That's amazing. So wait, so you're you're stepping foot on college campus. You weren't even sure that you wanted to go to college, and then then you study finance. <laughs> like, yes, it takes me so, through that because normally, like you know, people study communication or something else like that. So, like, where did that find you? So I've always kind of felt energies of people, and I've always been good at business. So the combination of that is marketing. Okay. So I actually majored in marketing, okay. and then even more specifically, market research because I wanted to understand this the psychology of what made people do the things that they do Mm -hmm. so so that's what I went to school for Um, and then they had this this competition for Goldman Sachs because the crisis had just happened and they were kind of like pulling hairs to figure out what what was going on and I had just interned at FINRA the Financial Regulatory Authority okay Um, I'm one of the co-authors of the member regulation handbook for the stock market Wow. But I had never actually seen the stock market. <laughs> <laughs> You're one of the co-authors and you never see the stock market. Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, so when I get asked to do this competition, I walk into the library and I've lost 100 pounds. So I didn't think people even knew who I was. I wasn't a very popular person. I didn't think I was a popular person. Come to find out, a lot of people knew who I was. I just didn't know people. And I had a reputation for being very smart, and I didn't even know it. (laughs) So I walked in the library, and this group of people was like, hey, there's the girl. And 
And I'm like, what do y'all want with me? You know, and they're like, we want you to lead us in Goldman Sachs portfolio challenge. And I was like, I don't know anything about the stock market and I've never done a portfolio challenge. And they said, oh, we're confident you can lead us. And I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> and what, what? What did they see in you? You know, that they, did that you ever asked them? Like, I've what? never asked that. Um, what I did ask was how did you even know who I was? How did okay. you even come to identify me? And they told me that I sit in the front row of every class and I always know the answers to the questions and I always get the highest grades on the test which was true Mm -hmm. and so that I didn't think anybody was paying attention to that I was just kind of like you were doing your thing I was just doing my thing in my own world you know I didn't know that other people were noticing and come to find out there was like this whole like secret society of people talking about Angel being a smart girl and I I didn't know it was a thing so (laughs) I had no idea um but that was actually that was actually kind of cool though because it was the beginning of me having a social life for the past four years before that I hadn't hung out with anybody went to any parties anything I literally you were just did, there doing your thing literally. focusing sitting in the front row learning absorbing making the most of it yeah and so you say yes yes and, and and then you know I mean there must have been some level of like fascination with the side like something with numbers and then at that point like where was that for you that's very funny nobody has ever asked me that um, that's also why I didn't understand why they picked me. I did not have any experience with stock finance anything. In fact, I dropped out of the five year MBA program because it had too much accounting in it and I didn't feel <laughs> as though I was that good at math. This is the person that created the financial <laughs> literacy program and has won all of these awards and literally has like the, the number one app for financial uh, literacy. It's like a game like Candy Crush, but you learn how to make your credit score go up, right? Yes. You know? Yes. And, 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 and like, this is this is fascinating because you never know where you're going to go. And that's an important thing to note is like sometimes when we're living our life, we think we have an agenda or we think we have an adversity to certain things, but we don't know where we're kind of leading ourselves and what might happen in a few years time, right? I mean, I bet you at that point, you would have never thought that you would be where you are today. Actually, that was the moment I decided to be where I am today. Oh, <laughs> let, let's hear about this. <laughs> let's hear about this. So we won. And when we won, I said, hmm, how would somebody have ever figured this out? I was like, who's going to sit down and reverse engineer the stock market and just happen to be good at statistics the way that I was? You know, I ended up being gifted at it, had no idea. And I said, there needs to be a game where people can live out their financial life without the risk of them losing their money. And not just stock and not just life insurance, the family that I come from, but everything. There needed to be a gamified system to walk people from birth to retirement in a game so that they can simulate their life so that once they actually have the money, they know what to do with it. Yeah. So this was in 2009. I thought. And this is like, you know absolutely needed i mean that's the biggest thing that's i feel f- forever that's missing like that, that nobody teaches people how to manage money and kids you know like a lot, a lot of kids in college end up having multiple credit cards before they even graduate and you know there's no like save this do this and don't they say like most americans uh they have they live paycheck to paycheck i don't know what the you'll know the statistics of yes. it but and then and then nobody's really planning for retirement. They don't know how to manage their money. They don't know how to create, you know, financial security and wealth. But, you know, I, I heard somebody speak, you know, years ago and said, if you say it's the the, the latte effect, do you know that person that created that book, The Latte Effect? I don't. Oh, oh, they, pretty much they engineered a model that said, if you save $5 a day and you do it in this way, instead of spending it on a latte, you can retire with a couple million dollars, depending if it was a 15 year or 30 year period that you did it. Oh, wow. Um, it just by you know amortization of, yes. of the money but anyways keep going no what? but you're so accurate you know i graduated with one hundred and eighty thousand dollars worth of student debt or worth for debt i should say um about a hundred of it with student loans the average student graduates with about thirty five thousand dollars worth of debt in america overall a third of people cannot go more than a month without their paycheck Half of America can't go more than three months without their paycheck. 75% of America can't go six months without their paycheck. Wow. 
Yes. See, I knew you'd know the statistics. <laughs> I was just like things that have stuck out at me in the past that I mean, like they went into my memory, but I didn't know them like you. You know, seventy five. Seventy five percent. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So, which is why when things like the government shut down and that's a large amount of America's workforce, you could potentially have a financial crisis if it extends to a certain period of time, okay. which is one of the main reasons the furlough needed to end that just yeah. happened. But that's a whole nother subject. Okay. So, so, two, so, <laughs> so 2009, you're yes. saying, okay, gamification, Yes. you know, and I, I love that you met people where they're at because people love to play games. and Exactly. And that's what I realized. I realized that this whole game wave was really taking off. It wasn't going anywhere. It was starting to transition into mobile and all these various different facets. But I didn't really see a lot of education happening, nor did I see a lot of simulation happening. I was laughed out of every room at the time. Um, the only thing education technology at the time was Blackboard. The word gamification didn't exist until three years later mm -hmm. in 2012 by Wharton. And financial literacy standards didn't come out until 2014. Wow. So, th so I was, I you was were ahead of the game, way ahead of the game. And people are like financial literacy ed tech game. <laughs> What are you talking about? You know, now it's all the rage. Now all the banks are trying to figure out some type of financial literacy game. It's hilarious. Um, but I decided to become a global market research analyst at Prudential at that time. Instead of going off and creating the game or going off and creating a hedge fund, I felt like I was way too ahead of the market and I needed to figure out the proper solution for the game. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the hedge fund, I felt like there was enough billionaires in the world and they still haven't solved poverty, so what good would it do for me to just become another billionaire? Mm -hmm. I felt like I might end up losing myself along yeah. the way in some capacity because surely at least one person has started with good intentions, but <laughs> what has happened <laughs> over a the period way? of time? You know? yeah. like, why do we still have homeless people and all these other various different things? So I decided instead to spend my youth and my energy on researching the problem. And so I became a global market research analyst for Prudential Financial, and that was a result of, once again, I walked into the School of Business one day, and this guy said, hey, you should do Prudential's case competition. And I said, I'm over case competitions. I want to go Miss Sachs. I, I'm going to just go ahead and graduate. This is April. So I was like, I'm going to just go ahead and graduate. I think I'm, I think I'm good. He's like, nope, this is life insurance and marketing. My whole family sells life insurance. My degree is in marketing. He was like, if you don't do this, you're just lying to yourself. I was like, okay. So I ended up doing it. We ended up winning first place. And we came up with the idea of selling life insurance to Generation Y. Okay. Now, this sounds like nothing now, but at the time, it was groundbreaking. Yeah. At the time, the thought process to sell life insurance online and to people under 50 was insane. Yeah, no. So I was actually in Forbes magazine when I was 22 for that. Oh, nice. And then I got to pick any position that I wanted to um, at Prudential, and I became a global market research analyst. And from there, I conducted the first African-American financial experience study, the reason that there's currently blacks in life insurance commercials, and helped start the catalyst for the financial services industry finally focusing on the black community. Made them a few billion dollars, changing around um, problem resolution standards. I just made them a few billion, you know, <laughs> you know nothing. Just six billion, sixty million of bottom line profit, you know. Catch <laughs> a little bit of money, you know. And then, you know, God sort of came knocking on my door. Um, because I had asked for three years when I had the thought process in 2009 about the game, almost to the T of three years, God came back and was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and at that time, I had literally just made the company $6 billion. They uh, put me on the CEO track, gave me a full ride to Wharton. I was making uh, 90000 They were promoting me to 110000 mm. I was like 24 years old. Um in a double promotion, a bunch of stuff. And I decided to go to Africa. And when I went to Africa... Wait, wait, wait. Where did that decision come from? What was it? You know, like, the, you don't just like, ah, I'm just going to go to Africa today. So what happened? Well, I had never taken a vacation okay. the whole time I was working. Surprise. <laughs> Still technically had it. Um, I feel that was, you. A, that was a work trip. But anyway, <laughs> I hadn't taken a vacation. And my church was doing a mission trip to Africa. Okay. And I said, ah, oh, this is perfect. 
perfect. I just did the African American study. They finally see that there's money in the in the black community. They're saying it could make billions a year. Hey, Prudential, sponsor my church going to Kenya. No, sorry, we can't do that. But you just told me that this research could make you billions a year. I'm just asking for 175,000. I'm gonna put t-shirts on everyone. I'm gonna fly a helicopter across us and take aerial pictures to promote the amazing work that you're doing for the black community for the African diaspora. No, we can't do it. Wow. Oh, okay. So I didn't have to leave to go to Africa with that on my mind. And when I get there, I meet a little boy in a Wharton t-shirt. And every day I see him in this Wharton t-shirt. It's his only piece of clothing. Mm. And after about three weeks, it got to the point where I was avoiding the little boy, where I didn't want to see him. I'm like, y'all can't give him other clothes. I'm feeling some type of way. Then I realized the issue isn't the little boy, it's me. Mm -hmm. And that I need to quit my job to create equal access to financial literacy everywhere. And I made it my goal and mission that by the time he got of age, that it could actually be a reality for him to go to Wharton. Because being in Salawa, where people from Nairobi in Kenya can't even tell you where Salawa is, for him to get out of that, for him to get out of Nairobi, for him to get out of Kenya, for him to get out of Africa and into Wharton, the odds were extremely stacked against him. And I felt as though it really boiled down to financial literacy. Mm -hmm. So if his, if his parents or his community knew how to make money and knew how to be self-sustainable, then they would essentially be able to get out of their circumstance, get into better education, leave the country, this, that, and the third. And I felt like it was an unfair advantage. I start my speeches with, raise your hand if you want to die broke. Yeah. Some people say yes, some people say no. The answer really isn't important. Mm -hmm. What's important is that you were able to make a choice. Yeah, but I mean, I'm sure, sure most people say no, right? You most know. people do say no, but some people say yes. Really? So, yeah, because they look at it as religion. Oh, you know, okay. I'll give all my money oh, away gotcha. and I, I do gotcha. want to die broke. Okay. They think I'm going there with oh, it. Oh, I see. <laughs> so, they're trying. To they're be, trying. They're trying to be the creative, like, intelligent one that's, pr you know, seeming that they're smart, that yeah. they're predicting where you're yeah. going. And gotcha. I still get them, too. And I go, the I look them in their eyes. The answer isn't important. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I just um, I just felt like people should not have to uh, not have the option of choosing to die broke. You, yeah. you, you shouldn't be born into a circumstance, and because of the resources available to you, you're not able to escape that circumstance. Yeah, absolutely. And that's just what drives me now, so that's what I do now, helping people get out their circumstance. That, you know... <laughs> That was a very long-winded, how, who am no, I? <laughs> no, but I mean, that's just like, in, in the interesting aspect of it is that I'm looking at it from a spiritual approach, too, was that you were giving these, like, shepherds, let's just say, or these these instrumental forces in your life that showed up maybe as a, a, a a fellow student or a different person that you know almost like guiding you and yes. you're doing this like journey that and even that little boy and the fact that you were constantly seeing him every day and yes. every day you know and it hit you because I mean there's millions of bits of pieces of stimuli and information and probably you know hundreds of people that you might have seen in the day but he stood out yes. and it continued to reoccur and in the same way of like you stood out to your stu to your fellow students and, and classmates and they're like, you need to do this. And then again with that other project, and it was like it was like you're being guided and I pushed am. forward and making massive changes. Let's talk a little bit about some of the changes that you've been able to be implement. Because you know, it's not just about she's created these theories and, and market research. No, like you're literally changing people's lives and on a huge scale. So that is probably the most gratifying part. Um, so so we, we started that. So after I left my job, we created the technology. Um, so Wealthy Life designs financial literacy education technology games. We walk people from birth to retirement in 12 interactive modules to exceed the personal finance common core standards. And our primary game, Credit Stacker, is similar to Candy Crush, but instead of swapping around candy, you swap around credit types to pay off your debt, achieve a high credit score, and learn from the multiple choice questions. In this 
it's been named the best financial literacy product in the country by the White House, Department of Education, J.P. Morgan Chase, number one education app in 14 countries, top five in 40, a ton of accolades. But the accolades aren't even what get me excited. What gets me excited is the life the lives that we've been able to change. The the first one that I got on August 17, 2017, after only being live for two weeks, a guy sends me a screenshot of his credit report of having increased his credit score by 75 points after playing our game for two weeks. Wow. It was like, I literally, if you see the screenshot, I write back, you're kidding me. And so, <laughs> so, this, so this game came out in, in, in 2017. It came out August 2nd, 2017. On August 17, 2017 I get a screenshot of his credit report it was this weird thing that through the aligning of time and God he started playing it on day one started implementing what he learned on day one the cycle of his credit report then came through because he paid off some things off of his credit because he learned through the game and then literally improved his credit score by 75 points in two weeks Wow. And he was like, he was like, your game helped me do this. Put that in your research study. I'll, I'll, you can see the screenshot. What, what, like, what's, the, what's the name of the game? Can the I, game is called Credit Stacker. Credit Stacker. Can they download it? It's like it on, on iTunes. I mean, I mean the Apple, like you yes. know, and and, and all. It, so it's for Android and iOS based yeah, platforms. Yeah, so it's free. It's on Google Play and on uh, iOS. It's in sixty countries and in twenty one languages. Nice. And, and what do you find, like, the people that actually, like, download it? Because, I mean, I'm sure there's, like, the people that are, are wanting to really do it for an objective, and so they're searching for those type of games, but how do you get it to the other people? Oh, you have no idea. Uh, so, <laughs> so we started off with the little boy in mind, right? Little black kids. That's, that's what we thought was going to be the end-all, be-all to this game, to this company. For kicks and giggles, I just launch it globally. You know, I, I take like just a little bit of the advertising money and throw it out there globally. The next morning I wake up, we're in 42 countries. Now we're in 60 now, but that morning, the next morning, we were instantly in 42. And I was like, what the heck? And so then I monitored it and I'm thinking they're gonna fall off. Nope, 60% of our downloads are coming in internationally. Then, a good probably 20 solid percent was coming in through Latin America. Now, do their credit scores, though, because isn't the credit score for America like... Get this. This is what we found out because when we were raising money, that's what investors would tell us all the time. Oh, how are you going to deal? You're, you're going to be limited to America. How are you going to expand internationally? The financial systems work differently there. Yeah. I mean, that's what that's the first thought in my head you know like uh, I'm looking at it, it's like well, they operate differently so I'm gonna I'm walk you through the excitement <laughs> okay, I, yeah so we a week goes by we went on wars in Chile and Colombia out of the history of all apps now we go what the hizzity heck okay Brazil becomes our number one country what the heck is going on <laughs> we start diving through the comments we have comments in English and in Spanish of Latin American women telling us, for the most part, they're not allowed to manage their finances and that they play our game at night in closets as a pre-immigration tool to prepare to come to America and leave their husbands. Wow. And that is why we've been blowing up in Latin America. That's deep. I could not, I got chills. Me too. Like, I could yeah, not like, have come up with that, predicted that. I didn't know anything about that. But that, that's like, where we don't know. And like, for multiple and, women. You know, we don't, we, you know, we don't know when we create something or how affected it is. And that's where you have to have that open mind. But it's like, wow. And, you know, now looking back at that, at that statement, I can say, oh, well, that makes sense. There's a motivation factor that, you know, they're really set and they, they're, they're, they're circumstance and they want to make a better life for themselves. And they want to make sure part of making a better life is taking control of their finances. Yeah, so, you know, it's one comment that I'll never forget when people ask me, you know, what I enjoy the most that I've done or what the, whatever. It's this comment. This lady said that if it was, I, I can never talk about this without getting emotional. This lady <laughs> said that if it was not for our game, she would have never had access to financial education. And she has never had access to financial education outside of our game. She was writing in all caps. She was like, bless your heart. Thank you to the creators of this because you're saving my life oh my through God. a mobile game that's free. 
So it's like that is what that is what drives us. That is what like that is who I think of with every product that we come out with and that we continue to create. It's like it's insane. Like you're not thinking you're saving somebody's life when you're creating even financial literacy. I'm thinking, you know, we're going to raise some scores and, you know, open up some bank accounts or get a little bit more savings. But you're literally like in a situation and is using this at school to be able to You're freeing people to free your life like You're freeing what? people whether they're in an abusive situation whether they're they're living in a means that is toxic or financial what, slavery or, or financial slavery what you know you know toxic emotionally physically mentally all of that you know and it's you know, finances suffocate people, Mm -hmm. you know, and they trap it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so you're giving people the opportunity to live the life they want to live Mm -hmm. instead of the life they feel that they got dealt. Yes. And that, and that is, that is the joy for me in the product. And that is what we hope to accomplish, to have people simulate that joy and that freedom so that they know how to achieve it, to be able to get to it. So then once they actually encounter the money or encounter a bank, they know how to open up the account. They know how to go about paying their bills. You know, a lot of people don't even realize you have to pay your bills on time and that's 35% of your credit score. Like not on the second, not on the fifth, like, on the first, it's thirty-five yeah. percent of your credit score. So many people don't understand or realize that. Wow. That in itself is like pfft, powerful information. People are like what? You know. So you think something is so basic, but it can be such a treasure um, to other people. Well, the yeah. basics are really what. If we get down to it, we've got mm-hmm. ourselves so inundated in all of this stuff. But like, if we take back to what are the fundamentals. Mm-hmm. What do we need, you know? Mm-hmm. And in this this game that we play on a bigger level called life, because really, you know, that's a microcosm, right? It's playing this game on, on, on the phone or on a tablet or whatnot. But, I mean, really we're playing a game called life. Yes. And and it's like, how, how, how are we playing, mm-hmm. you know? And when we can get that and we can start simplifying, what are the things that we need for our own internal happiness? Yes. When we need to feel like we have shelter, we have food that we're taking care of, care of that we can go and enjoy some of the enjoyments right you know that we're healthy and that we can afford the food that it nourishes our body and if we can have that we can start to have peace of mind and then that's where creativity starts to flourish that's where the next hierarchy of needs comes into play you Mm -hmm. know but so many people they don't they the the, the, we've got them so out of touch with just basics you know, I agree. I kind of look at it like reading. Mm-hmm. It's financial literacy. Yeah. So if you couldn't read or write, how can you function? So I feel as though financial literacy is the reading and writing of money. Everybody has to have money in their pocket, whether you're disabled, deaf, blind, you still have a disability check. You, you know, you still what? Have like, this. like that just like hit me. But they, <laughs> so, it's so true. We're pushing all of, you know, like the thing. It, it, there's, you know, nobody would say that we don't need to help out our literacy in English or, or Spanish, whatever the different language of your origin is, that you need to be able to read and write and communicate, right? And so, but yet in order to operate in this system. It boggles oh, my it, mind. Like, it boggles you, my you mind. You can't go a day without. <laughs> existence without having some fi- financial transaction, right? You know, and whether you're buying some food or you're doing this or putting money in your meter or or whether you're getting a coffee or you're going to a movie, anything, even the house over your head or the different clothes on your back, this all costs money. It's our trading yes. currency. So that that just how you said it, mm-hmm. it just resonated. This is such a simple thing, but it's like, how come there hasn't been an importance? Well, I'm coming up with this right now based on your feedback. You know, I'm coming up with this right now. Bear with me, everyone. It's kind of like a driver's license. When cars first came out, only the rich could drive. Only the rich had cars. Yeah. You know, it was kind of this thing. Like, you didn't, a poor person didn't know how to drive. You didn't have a car. Yeah. So, as time went on, in order to equalize everyone everyone now get, has an opportunity to have a driver's license 
You now can go to driver school. You can go to your government. There's something there for you to go and be able to enter into this mainstream society of driving. We currently do not have that for financial literacy. It is still, we're seeing the cars go past, but how do I get a driver's license? I want to drive. Yeah. I, want, I want to get in. I want to get on the road. I want to. I want to excel down the financial fast lane. You know. Yeah. Um. And, and and the only things that had been up until now is is these you know weekend courses or things that cost hundreds of dollars that are still like this barrier entry. Which to get into. a rich family would be able to <laughs> afford. So that's like that, saying yeah. back in the day, you know, oh, there's driving schools. But they cost, I'm making up a number, $100,000 a year yeah. that only a, a rich family can afford. So, yes, you know, you can go to war and you, you can participate in these programs, but it's not government-issued yeah. free education that allows you to be on an equal playing field. Yeah. yeah. So, I have to ask you just because it was going in my head because, I mean, this app is free. You know? Yes. So, you know, how does it sustain itself? In app purchases and advertisements. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. I just had that, that little wheelhouse because I was like, I know you're yeah. making other things too. And I was like... Which is why I came up with an algorithm for user acquisition that outperforms Google. Uh, because Oh, really? we got to talk about okay. that. <laughs> so, you know? Okay. Yeah. So, outperforms Google. I mean, Google's yes. like, you know... So, yes. so, talk to me about this. Well, um, it's a fact. <laughs> so, so, basically, we reverse engineered... Um, Google, Instagram, and Facebook user acquisition algorithms, and we came up with our own. So for downloads um, of our game, or let's stick with our game, it would have cost $1.80 per download. For Facebook ads, it would have cost $3 per download. We actually got it down to $0.19. Cent. Um, we decided that we didn't want to necessarily focus on India, and we raised it back up to $0.24. Cent. So we can guarantee downloads at $0.24 cent at an 80% retention rate. Google called us and told us that they've never seen anything like it in the world, that they fool as though seriously. And they said, especially given the amount of funding that you're operating off of compared to like them and Facebook and, you know, major tech companies. They're like, how did you come up with this? Because you, you, so, you, you, you've won other two awards prior and reverse engineered models before. So, you know, you kind of like, all no, right, I, I got didn't this. even think of that. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> be good at it. <laughs> you I didn't even really think of that. You reverse engineer and then you're like, well, let's that, It seems to be my thing, okay? You think I can't figure it out. Let me, just give me a day, okay? Um, and it really wasn't even that hard, but uh, it took me like it did take me like a day. Yeah, are you gonna it's, are you gonna are you gonna license that algorithm out to others? So the last conversation I had with Google, um, because they and I don't know this for certain, but they created a initiative amongst universities called uh, Google AdWords Beta, trying to figure out a new algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> then they couldn't and then circled back and was trying to get more information from me. And I was like, I politely said, you know, at this point, you guys have said on multiple occasions that my algorithm outperforms you. You've directly told me that you can't even help me because you don't even know how I got the user acquisition down this low. So at this point, I think that you all should present me with some type of acquisition offer for the algorithm. Yeah. And they said, yes, we agree. And we'll get back to you. Nice. And so that's, that's kind of where the conversation is right now. And I recorded the end of the conversation and placed it on my Facebook page. Wow. So it's like, it is a fact. Our algorithm outperforms Google by 7.5 times, and they know it. That's, that's great. Yeah. So, so, you know, how, how using that algorithm... And using the, you know, to get more users and things like that. Are you, are you marketing to really those populations that need the most support? Yes. Yeah, so that's where somebody said to me, why don't you just create a flashlight app and charge advertisements on it since you can scale anything? And I was like, huh. No, I, I, mean, I meant specifically for your game. So right. like, you know, to touch the communities and the people, you know, because, you know, you're having such success with these, you know, uh, international women and people that are wanting to move and relocate and that you know there's different areas within even our country that you want to see you know people having more financial literacy and this is definitely a working tool that has been proven to be very effective so it's like how do we get them to play the game 
Oh, that that's easy. Okay, let's yeah. do whatever. Yeah, I want to yeah. know. It. Oh, yeah. So people play the game. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah no. So um, what's actually interesting is, and I'll, I'll I'll dive a little bit deeper into what I think you're asking. In America, people view it as an education tool. Yeah. And they look at it as as a learning. Okay. Uh-huh. In all the other countries, um, they look at it as a game and enjoy the fact that it's educational. So that's an interesting aspect of how the, the, the perception of it is different because sometimes when people, I just in my experience, people that view things as education, they sometimes lump that into work. Exactly. And, and, and that's so, what they do in America. And, and so, but if you can get it, if you can naturally get your brain state into a play state, you're actually, uh, the amount of learning goes up. You know, and so, you know, that's just from my experience. So it's like, how do you get America's Americans to look at it like game? So that's where we have been spending our time and energy. Um, what we came up with was a very unique curriculum. We actually just signed a very large contract to put us in 200 countries with that curriculum. They're going to white label it across various different countries across the world. Um, And it's been adopted by the Department of Education and did really well. And then we also came up with in-person games. So we call it Tech in Touch. Mm -hmm. So when we go out and are delivering the games, depending on how people feel about it, we sort of engage them in the subject and then wrap them into the tech game as well. So we found that to be effective for America. And it's kind of convenient because we're in America. But for the other countries, we really don't have to do that. They 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 want it, and they're like, "Wow, this is so fun!" And I'm learning, so it's 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 a very gravitational for them. In America, we do have to come up with angles as to getting them to play it. Once they play it, they're hooked. Like, okay, I have, I have videos of kids fighting each other. You know, oh, that's uh, awesome for the phone. But when they first see it, they're like, I don't want to play no educational game this then and there and I tell teachers parents everyone that's actually how we won Department of Education um, best education product they had us with the competitor uh, Everfi they set us side by side each other Ever five was very, you know, it's not a game at all it's just financial literacy the kid didn't want to play It was they were twin brothers on my table this kid was like oh at first, at first they were both like, yeah. Then this kid is like, oh my gosh, this is so much fun. Now the father is engaging in it, and the father, I can tell the father's super into. And he was a judge, and he's like super into the game yeah. as well, you know. And yeah, because it gets all ages, I'm sure, you know, like we, everybody from three to eighty, and so from um, three to eighty, I love that. The little boy did not want to leave. He did not want to give me back my phone, and I said, hey, guess what? You know, you can download it, and it's free. And he was like, yeah, and so. Once people play the game, they're yeah. hooked. Um, I'll give you one more. Um, I met a man. I was speaking at National Urban League, and he came up to me, and he said, my two-year-old son had me download your game. And I was like, what? He was like, I was driving in a car. Um, Tom Joyner had made me a little known fact. And he said, for weeks, for about two weeks, his son kept saying, hey, Dad, download Credit Stacker, download Credit Stacker. And the father kept saying, I don't have enough room on my phone. And, um, and so the little boy said, but me and you can play together and we can learn together and the father said there's no game out here that me and you can play together and learn together so then he's riding in the car two weeks later Tom Joyner talks about credit stacker and he says he almost stopped in the middle of the highway and was like Lord have mercy that is the game that my son has been asking me to download that is adorable so now every night before they go to bed instead of reading they play the game together Aww. So what's we get Americans to play it they're hooked yeah that's, that's amazing so what do you think is next for you well, we want it. We want to see it, not just for Credit Stacker for you. I kind of feel like it's a little bit of uh, the yeah. Yeah, the, they can be centered. Yeah, yeah. I just want to. I just want to put that as a distinction. Yeah, you know that. Yeah. So we're finally. I feel like I finally get to achieve my mission and my goal. We have finally entered a place in the world and in America where financial literacy is becoming a requirement. Yeah. Seventeen states are about to require it in twenty twenty. So this we, is this is like, you know, if you, if you not even just a couple years ago. Yeah. It, and and you're changing and having 17 states require. That is such 
huge progress. I try not to and, think and, about and, it. And, I try and, to be as humble no, as possible no, no, in that I mean, thought. But, but that's, that's a <laughs> tremendous amount of progress in a short amount of time. You know, you see people that sometimes do tremendous amount of progress, but it's over like, you know, a lifetime of journey. And not to say that mm-hmm. this isn't a buildup of it, but, you know, you just launched this game in 2017, you know, like, and, 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 you know, shifting and changing the dialogue and the importance and getting, you know, a conversation started that is actually transforming the requirement of the benchmark of what is acceptable and no longer acceptable for what is learned, right? And that was my goal when I quit my job. So we're very focused on making sure that we are the financial literacy product required in the schools. <laughs> so hence us just signing the contract for 200, you know, countries. So that, that for me and the company, that's where we're focused. And I feel as though I will be, I will feel very full circle um, when that happens and, and gets it, at least into one state, mm-hmm. uh, then I feel like I can I can relax a little bit, but not really relax. I can I feel a, a more sense of accomplishment around it. However, however I uh, should yeah. put that, yeah. But. I mean, I feel like you should have some sense of accomplishment around it now. But I mean, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I feel and what you feel. I totally understand because you know, as entrepreneurs, we're constantly craving the next and going and saying, "I gotta get it all, all the way, way there." there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and it, you see, oh, there's always more to get done, and okay, but yes. that, that's like there's now. But then there's always going to be the next big egg, it right? Is, it and is, especially if if the the viewpoint of hearing your story you know there's always something else that's going to come and I'm just excited to see where you're going to be in two years from now five years from now ten years from now because if this is all the things that you were you were guided and created already I can't imagine what's going to happen in a couple more years you know because I see this is going to blow up and, and, and become even bigger you're going to accomplish that and then you're going to create something you know and reverse engineer something again <laughs> that's what I'm excited about I don't feel as though I can let myself uh quite fully focused on something else until I get it in, in at least one state or DC or something yeah. like that. Yeah. But it's coming. It's coming. Yes. It's, it's already, it's, it's already, very close. It's, it's already very written close. and you know that it's, I already, do. it's already written. It's, yes. it's, it's happening. It's, it's already, it's like, it's like, I like to say that, that things that are going to happen in the future that are set, I look at them as future memories because when your yes. mind looks at thing, as a memory. It somehow knows that that was a reality of something that happened. And so looking at a future, your memory in the same way like that's a reality of what you know is going to happen but without the question without the doubt it's like a certainty it's like if you book a ticket and you're gonna go on a plane trip you like you don't think about it you're like okay I'm gonna get on a plane on Friday and I'm gonna go to Seattle or whatever you know like you don't question whether you're gonna go on the trip even though it hasn't happened yet you know what's gonna happen that's a really good point, and I think about, and I'm, I'm not going to quote it exactly, but the Bible says something to the effect of, if you can envision it and believe it, and God has placed it in your heart, then that means you can actually achieve it. And that's where yeah. the saying, if you believe it, you can achieve it, come from. Yeah. That's an actual like Bible verse. So it's like God doesn't provide you with visions that you can't accomplish. Exactly. I don't envision myself walking on the moon. I don't plan on being an astronaut. <laughs> I do envision myself being the richest person in the world and having financial literacy in every country. Yeah. So I, I and you're definitely on that path. <laughs> so, so, um, so yes, I, I do know that it's going to happen. It's just a matter of, like I mentioned to you earlier, I live in the sky. Yeah. I live in the future. Yeah. And it is almost a struggle for me to come back into the flesh in the present. I have I to be get, very conscious of it, you know. So. I get it because your mind, if it, you know, if I can map my mind like your mind and kind of get the same I feel like it's like we think and get all over in here and get so excited for what the things that we're creating right you know I I get that in you I feel that yes and and it's beautiful that you're manifesting and doing and you're doing from such a heartfelt space and you know you you deserve everything that's coming to you thank you that means a lot especially from you thank you (laughs) thank you thank you this has been like 
Uh, such a pleasure. We're going to have you back, and we're, you're going to do a book signing here yes. and learn more stuff. You know, where can people find you and, you know, learn more about you? Definitely. So, you know, definitely they can download Credit Stacker. On yeah, Play download it. I'm downloading it today, yes. and I'm going to start playing that. Um, you can get History of the Black Dollar on Amazon.com. Okay. Um, Black Women Politics. I love how you said Amazon.com. <laughs> Sorry, I have to tease you on that. At Amazon.com. <laughs> That. Nobody's ever like checked me on that before. I, I do do that. <laughs> I guess it's enough for me to say Amazon. Huh? Yeah, that, I don't that, would like, that would be like <laughs> on Facebook.com. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> I didn't make a mental note of that. Sorry, I had to tease you. No, you're right. <laughs> I just I was like, that's peculiar. <laughs> it was cute. I, I never thought about it. Um, so, and Black Woman Politics is coming out like in the next few days. It's technically sitting on Amazon right now. I just had to press the publish button um, from my end. Oh. So then it'll be out. Yeah. So by the time this podcast oh, yeah. gets edited, it's already out. So go yeah. and download it, buy it, you know, yes. uh, all of that. Yeah. And then follow me on Instagram at angelrich27 as well as at Wealthy Lifers. Awesome. Oh, my God. Such a pleasure. Yes. It's, it's Yeah, I really enjoyed this. I did as well. It was very, uh, very cleansing. <laughs> yeah. Well, we hope to have you again. And thank you for joining. Thank you. If you enjoyed this conversation, like it, subscribe and share it with your friends. If you want some more amazing resources on your path of liberation, head over to liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram at Liberate Hollywood, all one word, or Liberate Emporium, all one word. Until next time, liberate yourself.